We're going to begin this morning after Joe Biden's big night. The former vice president seized a commanding lead after major wins in last night's primaries, building on his momentum in the race for the White House and significantly narrowing a path to victory for Bernie Sanders. And Biden won in at least four of six primary states, with two states still too close to call. And in the coveted state of Michigan, he dealt a blow to the Sanders campaign with a decisive double-digit victory. Biden now leads by 150 delegates, but Bernie Sanders is vowing to stay Stay in the race as the two candidates prepare to take the debate stage on Sunday. Scholar Henry is in Washington and has the latest. CBS News projects Joe Biden the winner of the Democratic primary in Michigan. That's the night's top delegate prize in a state where Bernie Sanders was hoping to repeat his 2016 victory. He also took Idaho. This campaign is taking off and I believe we're going to do well from this point on. Take nothing for granted want to earn every single vote in every single state. CBS News projects Biden is also the winner in Missouri and Mississippi, where he got a huge boost from African-American voters and also won a majority of white voters. Electability is a top issue for Democratic voters. I think Biden's electable. Uh, he's a gentleman. That impresses me. I think he has more chance of beating the current gentleman in office. Polling sites kept cleaning staff and supplies on hand throughout the day, but concerns about coronavirus prompted both Biden and Sanders to cancel their planned rallies in Cleveland, Ohio. The Sanders campaign posted signs expressing his regret for canceling, but he had an upbeat message about his campaign throughout the day. When our record is compared to Biden's, when our vision is compared to Biden's, when we have that debate in Phoenix, I'm feeling pretty good. There will not be a live audience for Sunday's Democratic debate in Phoenix due to concerns about coronavirus. And some lawmakers are suggesting the outbreak could affect how campaigns reach voters going forward. There's a lot of handshaking. There's a lot of large gatherings. We're going to have to look harder at things like teletown halls. CBS News exit polls show a majority of Democratic primary voters say Biden is the best candidate to handle a major crisis over Sanders. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. So Molly Hooper is joining us now from Washington. She is a CBS News political contributor. Thank you so much for joining us, Molly. So Bernie Sanders says he's in it to win it. Well, he didn't say that, but he says he's staying <laughs> in the race, right? And he's, and he's preparing right. for the next um, debate. But what does he have to do to remain viable? That's a good question. However, if you think about it, both candidates, they're only, they're not even halfway to that, you know, 1900, essentially 1900 delegate mark um, for that you need to become the Democratic nominee in the Democratic convention. So um, I think B Bernie Sanders, one of the things he, you know, his supporters want him to do is to stay in the race so that when he get, when they get to the convention, Bernie Sanders will have more of an impact um, on the, the platform that the Democrats um, adopt at that convention, sort of what he did in 2016 when then Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. But at this point, he really needs to get his voters out to the polls. A lot of the young people who come out in the thousands to support him at these rallies aren't necessarily showing up at the ballot boxes. And I think that that's hurting him. Yeah, and it's kind of like not just that, though. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, like what we're finding when we look at the numbers is that some of the groups that were not inclined to vote for Joe Biden early in this process right. seem to be moving over. And he seems to be doing well with the young and the old and the black and the white and the educated and not in suburban, urban. <laughs> He's just kind of doing better all around. What happened to this mythical broadening of the coalition that Bernie Sanders had promised? Well, you know, it's not necessarily that Bernie Sanders wasn't able to reach those people because he did, you know, he was able to get a lot of Latino votes, for example, in Nevada. It's just that the rapid fire nature of which the other Democratic, you know, contenders dropped out of the race and joined in with the Biden campaign, you know, it's almost sort of a snowball effect that Bernie Sanders hasn't been able to keep pace with. And remember, all of these individuals, and I mean, gosh, remember all those individuals that we were talking about last year, uh, you know, in the 20s, they have supporters and their supporters are listening to the candidates like Amy Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg, and more recently Kamala Harris. Harris um, and Cory Booker. All of these individuals had a steady following, and those followers are listening. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, I guess the expectation was that um, Bernie Sanders was going to struggle in some states like Mississippi uh, because, you know, he's having a hard time with African-American voters. But he won Michigan last time, right? right? And he didn't this time. How was Biden able to win over those states that, that, well, that Sanders won before? Well, well, I think that this says more about the Democratic Party than it does um, the Democratic establish, than it does, uh, you know, Sanders' inability to translate that into another win. Because if you think about it, Michigan was one of those states that Hillary Clinton at the time did not devote a tremendous amount of resources to. And it was a huge surprise when, after she was ahead in all of the polls leading up to the Michigan primary, she lost. And part of that was because, again, she did not invest a lot of resources resources in that state. Meanwhile, we've seen in, in you know, somebody like a Debbie Dingell, um, one of the leading Democratic lawmakers in the state with a law long, with long, long family ties to the Democratic Party. She really has shored up support for Joe Biden and the, the establishment candidate, an individual who could take on Donald Trump in a state that's considered more working collar. I mean, you know, working class, blue collar, um, uh, you know, voters that Trump won, surprisingly, again, this was a surprise, in 2016. And that, I think, speaks a lot to the Democratic establishment's ability to, um, to really focus on that state ahead of a general election where they will be fight facing a Donald Trump. Right. Um, right. So when we spoke to voters in Michigan, in, in particular, and asked them what they were really looking for, they felt that, you know, the most important quality for their nominee would be someone who could bring about change. But voters also said they wanted a return to Obama era policies. <laughs> so they, they seem like a contradiction uh, in, in sentiments. Are, are they contradictory? Well, I think that when people say they want to change, I, my understanding of it, and this is when I'm talking to Democratic lawmakers, they want a change of tone. Mm. You know, the tone these days, everything is so polarized. Not to say that, that the situation was not polarized when President Obama was in office, because remember, that was the rise of the Tea Party. So, so things were polarized at that point. But just the general overall tone of the president, um, especially in dealing with international relations and other matters, um, that's sort of what, what I've heard Democratic lawmakers say they want a return to. Um, and and, incidentally, a change of. Mm -hmm. So so we can see that because I think that if you look at one of the big issues of this election, health care, um, especially in light of this coronavirus scare, uh, voters aren't willing to go to Bernie Sanders' uh, what could be considered a revolutionary change of Medicare for all, meaning a complete uh, elimination, essentially, of private health care. But they do want the option to have an extension of Obamacare, which would be a change. Um, hmm. So so you're right. It, it is a little bit um, contradictory. But if you think about it again in terms of the style of the president, that that's where I think that voters are looking at. All right. Molly, thank you so hmm. much. Thank you.